Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. So today's movie is a special movie that I happened to stumble upon the other day. I came home and turned on the TV and this movie was playing. It took me about 45 seconds to realize this I need to do on the show. So, what's the movie? Well, let's take a look back and find out. I'm tearing it up while I'm tearing it up. What is it? What is it? Oh yeah! Oh god, this looks beautiful. Horror. The 1991 NC-17 rated horror movie. I was always looking for dirty movies in the video stores as a kid. Always. So when this came out and I saw the NC-17 on it, I was like, okay, I have to get Wahor. So when this was on the other day, I, I flipped to it, and right away, I was mesmerized by this Laura Palmer-looking slut. Bringing to life this creature is the amazing Teresa Russell. Teresa Russell stars as the cynical beauty who's seen it all, done it all, and tonight, she tells it all. What? I sucked his fucking big black dick, so what? He wanted a white fucking asshole, fucking cop. And this isn't some low-budget, Red Shoe Diaries, Showtime original movie sort of thing. No, we're not talking about sketch artists. We're talking about horror, which was kind of mainstream. And it's from director Ken Russell, who directed The Boyfriend and Tommy. Also, Teresa Russell is not related to Ken Russell. They're not married. There's no blood relation. You know, just says Russell a lot on the cover. So, with that said, you guys ready to start? Horror? I know I am. Let's do it. Now this DVD wasn't easy to come by, but I found it, you know, because I had to open it up for the show. Otherwise, I just would have done it on Monday when it's on TV again. So if you guys have the movie channel, check your listings and see when horror's gonna be on again, because it doesn't seem to have a proper DVD release. It was pretty hard to track down, and it's not on Amazon Instant. Try to catch it on TV, because it is HD and all cleaned up, and it looks new. Now this woman on the cover is a whore, and I can't wait to watch her, you know? Because I didn't really watch it when it was on. I just saw a few parts, but I did not watch it. I didn't pay any attention to the story, if there is one. All right, well, who's ready for a whore? Play movie. I love how the title is in those big red letters just slowly floating down the tunnel until it disappears. The music, the credits, really had me thinking, all right, I'm interested already. So whore is the story of a whore telling stories about being a whore. She's also on the run from her crazy pimp. And there she is. Wow. Did you see that introductory hair flip? That was the best fucking hair turn flip glance that I've ever seen. Out of all the hair turn flip glances that I've ever seen, that was the best. I mean, you can just hear Ken Russell saying, action. Teresa Russell is absolutely amazing. Amazing at being terrible. I mean, we're talking Nomi Malone terrible, minus the hissy fits. Her acting is, I, I, I embrace her acting, her overacting, and just everything about her I love. Oh, she's bad. She acts exactly like Tracy Lords from Cry Baby. Just kind of aggressive and dramatic. You a cop? That's, that's how she acts. I want to fuck you up the ass. You can stick it up your own asshole. I mean, this guy responds to being told to fuck off by saying this. I would if I could, bitch. And then Teresa Russell breaks the fourth wall and she starts to talk to us. After a hair turn flip glance, of course. Jesus, you hear the mouth on that guy? She just called the chicken takeout restaurant the cluckin' fuck. Oh my god, she's so good. She's just so bad, but it's so good. So anyway, this guy picked her up and she's really slutting it up. And there's somebody in the back seat. He's with his dad and she goes, fuck you, I don't do incest. And she said, oh my God, no, I don't do threesomes. She's like, ew, this guy's old. He's like, oh yeah, fuck you, but he's got a young cock. This movie needs to be recognized for what it is. And that is 
absolutely terrible in the best way possible. He grabbed her head and he's pushing it down into his lap and the dad's leaning over the sea like, suck his fucking cock. She fights him off and he says another gem of a line. Don't flatter yourself, I wouldn't waste my cum on you. Showgirls, I found your long lost sister. How is this not famous? She got out of the car, fuck you, now she's walking, she just started talking to the camera again, talking to us. She says, one time I was raped, and we go into a flashback. Now these flashbacks are great because we get to see her in other whore attire. And she is just amazing. Just look at this walk. She's wearing this blue outfit and she just went like walking up to him like the, Oh my god. I have gray hair. How is this not famous? No, I'm a wet dream on legs. I'm a wet dream on legs? I figured out who she looks like. She looks like Tim from Bachelor Party. She really is so good. She just got in the van and she's... Teresa Russell carries this movie to a new height. A height so over the top that you can't even see over it. And now she's being attacked. She got into the van and she's getting attacked. So they're raping the hell out of her. The driver's freaking out like, stick it in her butt, man! Well, that was an interesting shot. She said, when they had enough, they just got rid of me. And it was the shot of the dirt, and it was there was a red light on it, and then, boom, the whore's body was just tossed onto it. So Pete from Twin Peaks just found the whore's body, and she's laying next to the train tracks, and her makeup, and she's trembling like a dog, and it's so over the top. The flashback ends, and she runs into this guy who's filling up his bike tire. Looks a little flat. Need a hand pumping it up. He says, I want to fuck you without a condom, baby. And this pisses her off. And now she's mad and she's doing this when she talks because she does this when she gets mad. Yeah, whatever, buddy. It's so good. That is really stupid. Did people take this movie seriously? She tells the story of a really old man named Charlie who liked to be beat with a cane. Well, he has a stroke, but that doesn't stop the whore from seeing him. Oh my god, now she's strutting into a hospital in another really weird 90s whore outfit. I love these fucking outfits. Oh my god, she's amazing. She looks like fucking Audrey from Big Brother. She fucks the old man and we go back to present day where she's delivering a humorous monologue. I would never pull out one of my breasts in public. And I would never open my legs on the street. I mean, I would never do none of that shit. As she's talking, a car zooms up to her and it freaks her out. It's the pimp, and she says one of the best lines in the movie. Goddamn motherfucking shit! Goddamn motherfucking shit? Why isn't this up there with like Troll 2? Now she's getting chased by this car and she's running through a tunnel. She escapes the pimp and she walks into a bar. She sits down and she orders a martini and then she looks back at us and starts to talk. He doesn't really think I'm gonna leave him. Whore, as I like to call her, says, I'm running away. I'm keeping all the money I make and spending it on my own. She said, I've been spending my money. She's having some sort of flashback and she's like, I didn't know what the fuck was up. And then we see her and the pimp having a nice dinner, celebrating her third year anniversary of being a whore. God, she's terrible. Oh, the, the way she scrunches up her face when she talks is so good, but it is so forced. She was being all professional and nervous and now she's, what the fuck is calamari? What is this shit? Huh? Looks like a dick. This movie is so quotable, I, I don't know why there aren't shirts out there with whore quotes on them. Now she's back in the bar. Give me another martini, please. Why does Elizabeth Berkeley get so much shit when there's this woman running around? Give me another martini, please. She then has a flashback to when she was a teenage Kathleen Turner. This is a flashback to her before she was a whore and she's talking with their friend and they're playing pool and they're looking at this guy. And the lighting is fantastic. I love it when a good director directs a bad movie. And this is only bad because of Teresa Russell who makes it so good. So she met this guy, they're making out, talking about marrying him. Oh, and there she is, living married life. 
ironing a shirt, chugging an entire beer in a trailer, pregnant, and she's this trashy old bitch. She looks amazing there, up against the wall, worn out, her dress matches the wall. And then the husband, he's puking in her salad. He just walked in and stared at her and just, bleh, just started throwing up into her salad. And now she's got her hair up in this little hat thing, a jean jacket, a black eye, and she's grabbing the baby and she's sneaking away. Now she's working at a diner. Great shot. It's all yellow on that side, all blue on that side. And she's dressed as a waitress now, being so stereotypical, pouring the coffee with her hand on her hip. It's so fun to see her go through these characters. There are so many good stills in this movie. I mean, if I were to take a still of that shot right there and put any quote from this movie on it, people would be like, what is that? And I need to see that. The next story she tells in a bathroom while giving herself a hoe bath. Literally. I mean, I don't see why a woman would have a problem with sticking her man's cock in her mouth. She says, I met my best friend in a place like this, and we go into her very own flashback land. Say, like, what the fuck? Space sluts go to college. Whore sees another whore who's been stabbed, and she tries to help her by taking her into this bathroom in a movie theater. After a while, this bitch comes busting in and starts laying into us, calling us dirty, filthy sluts. Dirty, filthy sluts. I love her voice. So a girl named Katie comes to the rescue and her and the whore become best friends. The friend is in a bathtub drinking wine, smoking a joint, and the whore is up on the bath next to a bottle of wine, taking the joint and smoking and busting up reading Animal Farm. Now they're sitting in bed with popcorn and a beer and she's like, I just loved that life. I can't believe how much I love her. Some guy just burst in, he kicked the scrabble board and punched the girl in the face. Now he's attacking the whore. He grabbed Animal Farm and threw it in the fire. And she's going to the fire going, hey, and he's pulling her back and she's reaching for Animal Farm. He just took out a switchblade and he said to the whore, hmm. It's the pimp and he beats Katie down and he grabs the whore and he takes her with him, forcing her to go back on the streets. She's back in the bathroom. That was the end of Katie and me. She leaves the bar and walks around while talking to us until she runs into the guy who wanted to bear back her. This is when I turned to it and was like, oh my god. Give me head or you go to jail. So I give him head. She's talking to the camera about cops, walk into this vending machine and there's the pimp. How is this gonna end? He says, where the hell have you been? And she says, I was in a motel with a trick for over 24 hours and he robbed me. And he says, whatever, bitch. You be here in one hour and you better have that money. And then, in a surprising twist, we get a monologue from the pimp. Who the fuck does she think she is? And he's very dramatic, talking to no one, and he's evil. And I think he's gonna kill our whore. As he's talking, we then see the whore in a movie theater in red and blue lighting talking to this Jamaican guy. I never kiss nobody. You never do. I'll sit the cock, they can lick me, they can fuck me, but no kissing. And then it cuts back to the pimp, and then it'll go back to her in the theater, and it just keeps kind of bouncing back and forth. It's so good. It's going from him saying all this fucked up stuff with this music to her in this theater with this lighting. Now him with the horns. Mm -hmm. This is one of the best scenes in the movie. Maybe not the best scene, but certainly the most stylish. That wraps up the double monologue scene between her and the pimp. That was an interesting vignette. That's what this movie is. It's a collection of vignettes narrated by a whore. And they're comical, you know, they're not very serious. And if they are, they seem comical because of the way she's talking. God, she's, I can't stop saying it, but my God, she's so horrible. All right, so if you don't love her already, listen to this little tidbit of information. There was this one guy, right? He, he used to like watching me take a dump, okay? I mean, he used the flashlight. Yuck! He used a flashlight? She then recalls a memory where she's with this perverted man. 
Isn't that a great shot? And look at her outfit. She looks like Emily Valentine, you know, Kyle from Child's Play 2. And I let him know I didn't do nothing dirty. I don't do anything dirty. Then he just nods and points to my shoe. For a minute, I thought he was going to fuck me with it. He does some weird stuff with the shoe, and that concludes that little vignette. I just love the way she's talking to me. And you know what else? I mean, that's what she's doing. She's just going on and on. Usually that would bore me, but Teresa Russell keeps it afloat with her weird personality and bizarre character choices. The doorman just walked up to her and applauded her monologue and said, and she goes, oh, okay. And now she's looking at the camera, but she's laying down, so her hair is going down, but it looks like it's just like shooting out of her head. I was an unfit mother. It looks really good. You gotta see this. I mean, she's just a whore. Hey, well, I don't like any of these shits. She's just a whore. An old guy pulls up to her and she gets into his car and they go to a parking ramp to fuck. And to add just a touch of class, look at the whore. And in yet another unpredictable surprise, she ends up fucking the man to death. Don't just sit there. Put yourself away. Hey, it ain't funny, man. The pimp jumps up behind her and he throws her out of the car. She gets up and he smacks her again. He's holding her down. She's freaking out. She's laying against the pavement and her makeup is smeared and he's smacking her and choking her. Oh my God, he's gonna kill the whore. And he's killing the whore. But before he can kill her, oh, the Jamaican guy comes and saves the day. The guy reached around and slit his throat. And he took out his wallet and said, his license just expired. And she's laughing and he's dead. The guy says, thanks for the popcorn, and he runs off. Well, the whore looks around, and she begins to walk away. Oh, oh my god. This triumphant shot of her walking right with the music. Oh my god. And she's just walking into the light, starring Teresa Russell. All right, we got to put on Christopher H's music while we talk about this. That was so good. And it ends with her walking, she swings her purse around, and she smiles, and she walks confidently into the ending. She was amazing. So what do I give War on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a five. If you take just any sentence out of this movie and just read it and s tell somebody, hey, that was in a movie, they'd say, what the fuck movie was it? And then you'd say something else. They'd say, well, what is it? Then you'd say another line and another line. And they'd say, my God, that sure is a quotable movie. What is it? And you'd say, well, it's horror. What a beautiful film. See horror. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.